Hello everybody and welcome to episode 11 of An Irish Knitting Podcast. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. I am Sam, I'm an artist, illustrator and aspiring knitting designer based in the Republic of Ireland. You can find me all over the internet, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter and of course my Ravelry page looking for Irish farm art. If you are a new viewer, thank you so much for coming by. This is my weekly by weekly, whenever it happens, a podcast in which I try to follow the classic knitting podcast schedule talking about finished works, works in progress, acquisitions and uh, every other craft endeavors that is going on in my life, everything through the eyes of an artist or as much as I can. If you are a returning viewer, once again, thank you for spending an hour, 45 minutes with me. This really, really means a lot. So today we don't have much content or at least we don't have a lot of Finnish works. A lot of big Finnish works, but we do have some smaller items that I managed to finish. And this because, of course, life gets true and stuff happens. I'm based in Ireland and this week was uh, St. Patrick's Day and uh, St. Patrick's weekend was an extended uh, bank holiday over the weekend. So I didn't really manage to get my needles up. I was, uh, of course, celebrating with friends and family. And of course, uh, St. Patrick's is a very busy time, uh, a lot of stuff to get ready, prepare and uh, enjoy a couple of pints as well. I'm going to put some footage of the St. Patrick's Festival, the parade here in Dublin, at the very end of the video. So, without any further ado, Grab your cup of coffee or tea or whatever beverage you have, uh, your knitting, your crocheting, your needlepoint, and let's get into Finnish works. My first uh, Finnish work is not really a Finnish work. Uh, well, it is a Finnish work, but I've done this a couple of weeks ago, is what I'm wearing now. This is the Rogeresque cardigan jacket by Mary Thousand. And uh, this is amazing. I've been wearing this over and over and over and over again. I have uh, washed this so many times and he held up really, really well. I am going to put all the specification about the yarn and the gauge and the colors and the pattern on uh, the screen here as per usual, so you don't really need to um, take notes or anything even if you wish to take note, I don't know. But um, I made this cardigan using a superwash wool that I had in my stash. And specifically the Grand Studio um, Extra Fine Merino wool, which is a DK yarn. It's very lofty and uh, really, really soft, as you can imagine. I had really bad experiences with uh, superwash and merino wool. If you have seen my previous blog, I was talking about uh, a beautiful bubble sweater by Stephen West that I made using Superwash Cascade 220 that I threw in the washing machine and it got completely ruined. This cardigan though, it's been washed over and over again and uh, it's still quite perfect. So. I know there is a lot going on about um, drops, uh, Grand Studio wool. Uh, I can't really fault it. At least this specific lot of Merino Superwash, it's just beautiful and soft, washes really well. I don't know if uh, we have to fault Cascade to 20 either. It's probably due to a mistake of wash or the fact that I use perhaps a too aggressive uh, detergent? I don't know. It put me a little off using Superwash, to be honest. Although I really love the feeling of Merino, as you know, I'm really fussy about wool and what I put on my skin is always really itchy. 
and this is basically a um, sweatshirt. <laughs> Um, it's, it's, it seems like cotton, it's so soft, it's lovely, doesn't itch at all and yeah, again, it wears out really, really well. There's a smidge of bubbling going on in the underarm but nothing that can't be solved with a little brush or, or just some scotch tape actually. The fit is quite lovely. It's basically knitted in pieces and uh, sleeves as well are knitted flat. I kind of uh, uh, fudged the situation and uh, knitted uh, the sleeves in the round. It took a little bit of uh, tailoring and I'm air quoting here because I am absolutely not an expert in tailoring and just uh, took a little bit of shaping. The body was a little too large for my liking and the sleeves as well but it was an extremely easy process and actually was very much fun to follow. So I would definitely um, need another one of these. If I'm correct I follow the second size which is the medium size but I probably would go down a size next time I need this piece and uh, yeah I would love to experiment knitting, knitting it completely in the round and then sticking the um, collar and the band button uh, because it's a little bit easier and uh, I think I can get a grip of the shape a little bit better as well. But uh, yeah, here you have it, the Roger-esque cardigan by Mary Thousand. The bottom here are just a wooden button that I found in a publication, I believe. Uh, they just work very nicely. It's uh, just a lovely all-around cardigan all together. The second finish work uh, and I have probably obsessed everybody and I have stressed the life out of everybody in my YouTube channel, in my Instagram account, to Facebook and of course in the real life is this or are these little shamrocks. And uh, I have made this using uh, just a sock yarn. In this case, I believe it's Adria Field Calza Socks, which is my favorite sock yarn, as well as you know, in the beautiful lime green color. Uh, this is just a shamrock, a clover, I believe you would call this, oversea. Uh, it's knitted in the round using the magic loop technique. I recorded a tutorial, pretty comprehensive tutorial, although I am not a tutorial person, but it's up there and I'm going to link it below in the description. The pattern is uh, available for free in my rubbery shop and uh, yeah, it's a perfect decoration, little pin, little applique for St. Patrick's Day, but I have seen that many of you guys in the Project uh, Rubbery project page knitted four leaves clovers uh, rather than shamrocks, which is completely fine. And, you know, everybody needs a little bit of luck. So, the way it's constructed, and once again, please refer to the tutorial if you want to get full understanding of this, but it's knitted in the round using the magic loop technique, I have um, started with uh, the Judy's Magic Caston, which allow you to get a flat caston in the round joined together, so without having a loop. Increased a number of stitches on both sides and then decreased the same number of stitches and going down towards the very pointy of the, the very center of the leaf still keeping the decreasing. And then for the stem I just did a five stitches I cord which works fantastically. So everything together from the back of the clover and uh, applied a little um, brooch backing, how do you call this? And uh, yeah, this, this is just the most cute and uh, little lovely shamrock. I was really surprised when I launched this pattern. Uh, it went out on Ravelry and almost instantly got to top 20. It was featuring the kind of um, hot right now pattern or something like that. 
and it was uh, a really nice heartwarming feeling uh, because I generally take this as a hobby I want to get uh, into doing this crafting more and designing more but I never really got much of a positive or warm feedback out of this you know you upload a pattern on your ravelry shop and uh, yeah you get uh, three or four downloads and that's it but literally we got around uh, 400 download almost instantly which was mind-blowing but anyway if you're interested in uh, this pattern, once again, is for free in my Ravelry shop. I'm going to put the link below in the description as well. Another little note I want to make on this. This is about a 4 cm tall shamrock. And I use a 2 mm needles and a sock yarn, a 4-ply, a very, very thin yarn. You could definitely use some decay yarn going up with uh, your needle size and get a bigger shamrock. I wouldn't be surprised if um, the technique of creating these petals or this leaf will turn into a flower quite soon. Definitely you could have different sizes of petals and bunch them together and create like a rose or a daisy or whatever other flower you wish and I think it would work very nice. I must, must try to do that at some stage. Anyway, I'm really happy about my shamrocks. This got uh, a very, very nice feedback and I was wearing this on the parade and uh, it was just lovely. You know, it's uh, something that you made yourself, is not commercial and is really unique and based on the pictures from Instagram or from the project page. This is really easy to knit as well. Every single one that made this made a fantastic job. So check it out, uh, let me know what you think and uh, yeah, let's make more shamrocks everywhere. My next finish work is uh, another type of um, experiment. You have seen in my previous uh, blogs, uh, in my Ravelry page, in my Instagram, these little guys here. These are just uh, little bow ties or papillon or just regular ties that um, are really easy to make, knitted in the round once again with a number of increases and decreases as per usual in my kind of style. I have experimented last week with um, a bow tie inspired by Ukraine. I don't have it here, but I'm going to put a picture somewhere on the screen. So basically I was uh, trying to raise some money for Ukraine and we'll get to that uh, a little bit later at the very end of the podcast. Doing that, I realized that applying some color works on this bow tie would really make something nice and interesting and uh, a different type of bow that you really can play with, experiment with and uh, get some fun just. So I made this little color work here. They're just um, kind of swirls or waves of... Uh, water or the sea. It's really inspired by the ocean. Uh, you can interpret as you wish though. The pattern is draft, is out for test knitting and it will come to my Ravelry page very soon. I feel like it's just really nice and uh, would work really well with a white shirt and uh, yeah, so here is my last finished work. Once again, to knit these bow ties, I used some sock yarn and this is probably from Drops, is their Fable range of sock yarn which is just a regular nice enough sock yarn is probably not my favorite but it's really well available here in Ireland so here you have it. Now, moving on, this is not a finish work by any mean, but is kind of a finish. So, of course, we have a sock. So, let me talk about the pattern first and then we'll get into the nitty gritty. This is a work from the bottom down, 
it has a little color work, uh, stranded color work on the top of the cuff. Um, going down is a combination between uh, slip stitches and stranded color work. I believe this is kind of um, mosaic technique uh, merged with stranded color work, but don't quote me on that. I just got um, the idea from a mosaic technique and the idea from Strada color work and I really wanted to get uh, vertical stripes so that worked for me. The pattern is written and uh, it actually kind of works. So we get the Strada color work going down a combination of slip stitches, mosaic-ish, and um, color work and then we get the heel. This is the same heel I was showing you before in one of my previous videos that comes from my great grandmother socks. She knitted a lot of socks in her life and I have so many in my drawers as well. But I never got to learn from her how to make the um, heel. And uh, I was asking my mom uh, she doesn't know as well, my granny doesn't remember, so I took a pen and paper and I literally um, wrote down every single row of the pattern. took me forever, but uh, here we have it. This is a little bit of a play on that heel. It's not uh, the original creation. My great-grandmother would have done the heel in a block of contrasting color, uh, but I would... Um, I had just continued with the color work and then added uh, a little bit of uh, alternating yarn on the gusset here, which uh, works quite nice as well. So let me take this off the blocker and I show you the heel. So as you can see, the heel turn is a little small but it allowed for a very good fit because the heel gusset is quite large. I have no idea if you can even see this from the, the screen there, but uh, yeah, it's a very, very ingenious construction in my opinion. So the way you knit this heel is uh, you continue working in the round for the entire um, heel flap. Meanwhile, you increase for the gusset, still working in the round. You increase the number of stitches to each side of the gusset and then you will start decreasing by working flat. And this is where you have the little heel turn here. You work flat and you return to the number of stitches before the increases. And uh, this is the way that is constructed. So the fact that you keep working in the round for the entire flap will allow you actually to create a color work for the entire sock. And you only have this little piece of heel turn, which is in contrasting color. That for me works amazingly. Of course, you could work the heel turn in uh, color work as well, if you wish. Uh, it's just I don't like purling in color work, so yeah, that's that's the only thing. But I will definitely experiment with this construction a little bit more. So this socks has been a tech edited, and it's now with a million of uh, test knitters. Uh, literally, so many of you responded for the test knitting. It's quite amazing and it never happened to me before. And uh, again, if you are interested in um, knitting the socks, just drop me a line, send me an email through my email address irishfarmart at gmail.com and I'll be delighted to send you the pattern. Although this will probably go out later this week as we are at the very end of the test knitting and uh, I'm need just to finish the second one and uh, of course uh, get some pictures done. It will be just a pleasure for me to be able to send you the pattern for free and uh, just for you to try one of my socks design. Uh, this really would mean a lot to me so please drop me a line or send me an email and I'll be giving you, sending you the pattern. The pattern as we uh, stand now 
it's only written and edited so we don't have any pictures but i believe i post some pictures of these socks on my instagram account so if you need a reference you can take that as a reference uh, the pictures will come when the pattern is actually ready to be published something more about this pattern this is the third or fourth entry in my kind of collection and once again i'm hair quoting here because uh, yeah it's a collection but uh, i take this as a project by project basis um, the collection is inspired by the palaces the buildings that face the canal grande or the grand canal in venice which is the main road or the main communication way within the city of Venice is a massive canal that runs across the city. Back when uh, Venice was an independent republic, all the rich families uh, wanted to show off their wealth and their power, so they built beautiful palaces uh, along the canal, facing the canal. So Everybody that were traffic in Venice, and as you know, there's no cars in Venice, so everybody goes by boat, um, were seeing the wealth of these families. I have dedicated a couple of socks already to some of the most beautiful palaces, and this goes to a palace that is really, really dear to me. The palace is uh, Palazzo Pisani, which is, um, used to be the family uh, Pisani's home. A very powerful family. I don't think they were noble, but still big into commerce, into fostering culture, fostering artists, and this palace is just amazing. It's massive, it's built with two big internal... How do you call them? Mm, it's like two big giant uh, squares within the palace. So the palace is built across and around these two squares. They're like two mini gardens. And uh, in the middle of each garden there is a well for fresh water, to get, uh, of course, water for the family, for the, the animals and for whoever, uh, whatever needs the family had. But it, it's just a very beautiful building. Uh, recently, the palace was given to the Institute of Music of Venice, the Conservatory of, Munich, of Music, Benedetto Marcello, which is where I study music. I graduated in piano and composition over there, and uh, the building was always very, very dear to me because it's, um, well, the home of uh, lyrical and classical music in Venice and uh, because it's just so magical. When you get into the palace, um, this is like the first reaction that I had on the first day of music school there, you stand in the middle of one of these uh, little uh, enclosed square and the palace is very tall, it's like six or seven stories tall and you can hear out of the many many windows all the people playing their instrument or singing and all this swirl of sounds goes up to this well and just mesmerizes you literally the first day i was there in music school i had to leave because my head was spinning and i was about to get sick so I had to leave, to take a breath, and uh, I got back and went up to my classroom and uh, yeah, that was a marriage of love. Every single uh, room, uh, classroom, is um, decorated with beautiful frescoes, uh, stone decorations, uh, stuccos, it's just so, so pretty. And we are so privileged in being able to study in such a massive building and such a beautiful palace and I think the, it's the perfect home for music in my city. It's open to the public I believe so if you're ever in Venice uh, walk down the Academia which is one of the squares there and um, try and find uh, the conservatory it is just so beautiful you can have a tour if you're lucky 
attend a concert. They are usually for free as our students are playing. Uh, it's just very beautiful. There is a very nice theatre inside the conservatory as well, which has the um, something really peculiar and probably unique within the music world. If you are into music, I don't know, you can skip ahead if you are not, but in the theatre of the conservatory there are two organs, two pipe organs. And these two pipe organs communicate with each other. So basically if someone is playing on the left one, will trigger some notes on some pipes on the right one and the other way around, which is a very, very interesting thing and uh, really unique in the world, I believe. Anyway, these socks are inspired by this, that uh, um, palace because the windows on the Grand Canal facing the canal, they are very tall Gothic windows and they are quite beautiful. All the building looks really, really vertical. And uh, yeah, so you have it. Uh, it's the fourth uh, um, iteration on my Grand Canals uh, or Venetian uh, inspired collection of socks. I have four. I don't know how many I'm gonna uh, do. I have faced myself a little bit of a downstream into knitting now, I don't know, knitting socks especially. I felt that this pattern took the life out of me. It was really complicated to come up with. I tried to challenge myself more and more and uh, really the things that ruins this mojo of coming up with pattern and knitting is social media. You see so many patterns, so many beautiful works that you feel like you are... Why are you even trying to do this? Like, uh, I'm not... Um, how can I say this? I, I haven't studied design by any means. I'm just kind of dibbling into art and uh, design. I haven't got a background in designing. I am, of course, we just established a musician, but as my daily job, I'm a lawyer. So completely different. And uh, I, yeah, I just find that I probably need a little bit of more um, inspiration, even more, I don't know, just to get rid of my social media, probably, and uh, just enjoy my crafting. Anyway, let's stop talking about uh, my troubles. Uh, the Palazzo Pizzani socks are here. They will be um, in my rubbery shop probably at the end of the week. But again, if you're interested in knitting this, please drop me a line. They're very easy, very quick. And uh, yeah, you can use whatever sock yarn you want, which is always a plus. Let's get into works in progress, taking that the socks were and are still a work in progress. My first work in progress, which is my first nightmare in progress, is this one here. Let me try and figure out where is the right side. Here we go. You can just see a about a seven centimeter strip of fabric. This is the very beginning of the Svensson uh, sweater or jumper from Brooklyn Tweed. This is a full-on cable sweater. It is my first time doing proper cables. It is my first time doing a sweater flat with cable. It is my first time having nightmares about uh, knitting. So, and the yarn that I'm using here is this cone of yarn here. This is from Holst Garn uh, Super Soft. This is their Silver Grey, which is a four ply fingering lace something. I'm going to put all the details here. Um, yarn, it's 100% um, wool, super soft. Uh, I just love it. I had many, many uh, jumpers knitted with this wool. Yeah, not the specific other colors, of course. 
they are just amazing. The wool is um, drenched in spinning oil, so whenever you knit it, the fabric results very webby, very loose and uh, quite horrible, if we have to be honest. But the moment you wash out all the oils, the fabrics becomes just amazing plumps up blooms it's super lofty super super nice warm cozy it's not scratchy by any mean it's just beautiful and uh, yeah i have as you probably can notice here in the corner many many of these cones and many came but we're gonna talk about that later in the acquisition part i just love it so i decided let me put this back to use this yarn held twice because you can't really get rid of much of the yarn if you held it, hold it uh, just one string and um, it's uh, a labor of love if you want to need a jumper just in fingering weight, um, which I'm by the way doing, is my next uh, work in progress. So I kind of was pushed to get rid of some of my stash and as well need something different, challenge myself and therefore here we go with the uh, Brooklyn Tweed Swenson uh, sweater. So the way this is constructed, I'm knitting now the back. We have a um, 5-6 cm of ribbing, regular ribbing with a um, knit from the back loop type of situation so it's not difficult it's just quite annoying and then we work in panels we have a central panel we have two lateral panels and two i would say hem panels they are the very very lateral piece on both sides so these are knitted in uh, moss stitch which for me was a big nightmare because the pattern is not clear on how much moss stitch is needed. I haven't done moss stitch before. I tried to look at YouTube videos. That was the way I was going. Uh, but if I had to use the pattern, God save us all. And then you have, you start with your um, different uh, type of cables. There are different uh, cables everywhere, all around, for the back only, we have, I'd say, six different type of cables. The pattern itself is not clear at all. It makes everything really, really difficult. An example could be this middle piece here. The pattern assume you repeat the center a number of times which is just like 16 stitches why wouldn't you literally put the chart of those 16 stitches on the paper a nightmare so i found myself unraveling this little piece about eight or nine times because i lost count the moss stitch didn't work because I lost a stitch at some point and I was just very annoyed and I was thinking to myself we are at the beginning if I don't save this now when am I going to save it so just a very very big deep nightmare someone on my Instagram mentioned that this will come natural as you need true I have no idea if this is true, this doesn't give me joy by any means. I just push myself to knit a row or two every day just to remember the chart and not to get to read a very, very bad pattern once again. The other thing that I'm concerned about, although on the flat I meet gauge, this is the back panel and it's huge. So I don't know how am I going to tailor this on my body? And uh, bear in mind, this is the smallest of the sizes. Of course, I needed my size following gauge and following what the pattern will say, but it was just like massive, 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 massive. So this is very big as well. 
I don't know if it's washing, the yarn would contract a little bit, or if I have this panel on the lateral piece just to be able to tailor it as, my, as to fit my size, I have no idea. I'm taking this now as an exercise in order to understand how to cable and in order to use a little bit of that yarn. If this doesn't work as a sweater, this will turn into a panel for a throw or something like that. Or a pillow as well, like a cushion would look nice with cables, wouldn't it? Anyway, this is my first work in progress. Big, big nightmare. Would I recommend it? Absolutely not. I've seen the Brooklyn Tweed has, uh, and this specific project has a lot of projects, so many people did this before. If you guys have any recommendation for me, please let me know this because I absolutely despise it. And I would love to be able to love it because the jumper looks amazing and uh, it's a classic feeling of an iron sweater, which for me is the ultimate sweater knitting. So if I manage to make an iron sweater, if I manage to make a full-on cable sweater, I am done as a knitter. I am going to stop knitting. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But you know, it's uh, the most challenging thing I would find. So I really feel like I would love to be able to knit this with pleasure. But uh, so far we encounter some troubles. Staying into troublesome project, we do have another project that comes from a cone. This is a cone of J.C. Rennie British Full Super Soft. It's more or less the same as Holst um, Super Soft Wool. 100% um, British Wool, this is drenched in oil, this will bloom up and so on and so forth. I actually used this before for one of the Mario sweater. I believe you saw this in my previous video. It's lovely. I'm knitting this uh, in the round with uh, a 2.5 millimeters needle and I'm holding the yarn only once. So it's a very light fingering weight jumper and I use as per usual my favorite 260 stitches custom which I know is my size so far I've done about 20 centimeter. Uh, I'm planning kind of a bottom-up sweater and I would love to incorporate my own design on the sweater and perhaps make uh, some uh, adjustment on a classic raglan sweater. There's nothing much to say, it's just playing ream of stocking it so far. It's growing really really slow because of course the yarn is fingering weight, it's very slow to knit, and as well I have so many other big projects on. This will come true. I'm not stressing myself by any means on this sweater at all. It's just a work that I would love to have time to do. But uh, yeah, I absolutely enjoy how the yarn works. I absolutely enjoy seeing this super mega thin spider web. I don't know if you can see from the camera, it's 100% see-through, but the magic of this yarn is that once you wash it, it just blooms amazingly and you get a fantastic fabric, very, very light as well. So, working on my second project, uh, I am dedicating like uh, half an hour every couple of days just to need true stock in it. Uh, it is what it is. Um, I kind of uh, can't wait really to get through the designing stage for the yoke and the sleeves and incorporate some nice features, some color work or probably some stitch pattern, some texture as well. But that will come eventually in time. And then we'll get to my last work in progress, which lives in my beautiful drill type of d bag. So a little bit about the bag. Uh, of course, it's not a project bag. I went out to buy myself a drill for some works in the house. And um, by my surprise, it came with this beautiful bag. It's... Um, a zipping zip bag opens 
flat uh, has a very strong sturdy bottom as you would expect for a tool bag a toolbox and uh, it opens with some wiring so it opens flat stays flat on the ground and in here we have my bubble sweater number two let me put my fantastic Dewalt bag down and I'll show you where we are. So you've seen this again, um, background story, I just mentioned it, but uh, I knitted this bubble sweater using Cascade 220 Superwash and uh, it was um, ruined while washing. Um, my fault for sure, I am not saying that Superwash Cascade 220 is bad, though when I tried it on, and you can see all of this in one of my previous blog, it was quite big. So I did hope that with a little bit of washing and blocking it would come to size, and the kind of did was a little big, I wasn't really minding, it was just beautiful. But put it in a washing machine, uh, took it out, and it was completely destroyed. It had a hole in the body, like if a stitch was dropped. Although I'm 100% sure I didn't drop any stitches, it probably got that weak in the washing that is not, and created this massive hole that was unsavable. All the bubbles were inexistent after washing, they literally flattened out and it got extremely bubbly. Literally, I had to clean the washing machine filter because there were bubbles and fluffs everywhere and the washing machine wasn't working properly. I still find bubbles and a little fluff of uh, Cascade 220 in my washing almost on a daily basis. It will take a time, some time to wash for sure. But anyway, I was so in love with that jumper, the fit of the jumper was beautiful that I decided to knit it again. And here we are here. I think I need another like five to six centimeters of uh, body before start the ribbing and then get onto the sleeves um, and this will be done. I really hope to dedicate some time this week so I can get it done for next um, podcast. I've done a couple of things differently. First of all, the yoke. Now it is as precise as you can get it. In my previous attempt, I really did miscount some of the stitches. So a couple of bubbles, um, rows of bubbles weren't really working well. You couldn't really notice it, but knowing that, I did notice very much. So this time I paid so much more attention in the stitch count for all the yoke and going down into the body. The second thing I did differently is the size. Although I got um, perfect gauge or almost perfect gauge, I decided to go down a size. So I'm now knitting the extra small size. This because I do like some negative ease in my sweaters in my jumpers, generally in my garment. I feel like my body shape of course is not perfect and it needs some sort of uh, artificial shaping. So that's why I prefer kind of uh, more stretchy garment. And uh, about the shape, as you can see, I have some stitch markers at each side of the body. This because I'm kind of uh, tapering the body a little bit to get um, to fit it better on my waist. I just decrease four stitches to each side. I don't think I'm going to decrease any more stitches. Uh, I tried this on and it's perfectly um, tight as I wish, um, so it's fine. I am noticing that the sleeves are a little too the sleeves all are a little too big. I will definitely taper the sleeves a little bit more than the pattern recommends, just to get a perfect fit. 
The yarn that I'm using here is Sunness uh, Per Gint. Uh, well, it's a combination of Per Gint and the Sunness Perfect. The Per Gint is the black one or the charcoal one, and the Perfect is the purplish color. Per Gint is 100% Norwegian wool, while Perfect is uh, kind of a sock yarn, 75% uh, wool and 25% uh, polyamide or nylon, one of the two. Uh, this because simply I couldn't find the right shade of color in the Per Gint, so I pick and choose. Doesn't really affect much of the work, they are the same weight and they feel like the same yarn. A thing to say about the purple one, the purplish color, looks really orange on the camera. And it looks orange under some light as well. If I knit on this during the evening time, this looks extremely orange, almost brown. If I look at this now with uh, morning sunlight, uh, this looks extremely purple, with a very very strong hint of blue which doesn't make sense to me. My mind is blown by this color. I love this yarn. It's like, a, it's just perfect, like the name would say. Uh, it's beautiful. And uh, yeah, this is my last work in progress. I can't wait to finish this. I'm basically on stocking at uh, aisle on two projects and this takes so much time and patience. At least it's a good television project. If I watch some show, I just need a long end. This will go through in no time for sure. Of course, the weather is getting warmer and I'm not going to wear this for the summer, but I just like to have it done and finish eventually at some stage. By the way, the beauty of this bag is that I can keep all my balls there and uh, especially the balls that I'm unraveling to uh, knit through is sitting there on the ground, I'm sitting on the couch and I can knit through and the ball stays within the bag without going anywhere, picking up fluff underneath the, the couch or anything, it's just amazing. Like. If the drill was cheaper, I would probably buy another one just for the bag. But yeah, really, if you have any idea of any bag maker, perhaps on Etsy that does this type of uh, situation bag, let me know. I would kind of be interested in uh, buying some bag that looks like this one. They are very, very useful. So, finally, let's talk about acquisitions. And uh, as you can see, I have some yarn acquisitions as well, so many of them. And uh, this will probably be a nice thumbnail for the video, but anyway, as you can see, I have some cones. And all of these cones, let me put them back one by one, come from Fully Neat. Vulinit is a UK-based company that I got to know through another podcaster. Of course, everybody knows her. She is Crea Bea. Uh, she's a podcaster here on YouTube and an amazing knitter. She did a collaboration with Vulinit, uh, giving us knitters a 20% discount with her code. I'm going to put the link below. I don't know if it's still running but uh, eventually you may try and get 20% off using her code. And then she is running as well a knit along for any garment, any object knitted using cone of yarns. And I have two and I have entered for the two of them. So finger crossed. There are lovely prizes for this um, knit along as well. Still I'm going to put the links below in the description if you wish to check her out. So, the website, it's a little complicated to navigate. So basically, you went, you go through the, the yarn that you want to buy, you put it in the bag. If you live in the UK, I'm sure it's easy, straightforward, you just place your order. But if you live outside the UK, you will need to send them an email, they will reply with the shipping cost and then you can place your order afterwards. 
completely fine. Went, went all really smooth and the cone came in no time at all. So, what did I get here? The first one, this one that I'm holding here, is the only merino uh, cone that I have. It's a uh, fingering weight yarn, 500 grams, and this is the color gold. It's so beautiful and so, so soft. I got one cone of merino only because you know me and my adventures with merino, so I didn't really want to get back into that same type of uh, situation. Although this is not super wash, which makes me think it will knit out, knit up quite beautifully. It doesn't feel super wash. It does feel drenched in oil, in spinning oil as well. So I'm really hopeful for this merino wool. It's a lovely gold, cold gold color. There's a little bit of green and a little bit of blue as well. It will make a beautiful type of um, big cozy sweater, a very very summery color as well, which uh, is not difficult to think that in Ireland you can't wear a jumper in the summer, but anyway, uh, can't wait to start knitting on this. The second piece that I got is this lovely orange here. I know that on the camera it comes out very red, but this is called burnt orange. It's 100% British wool, super soft. Uh, um, it's like the host garn uh, wool, something like that. Although I can feel it's a little bit uh, more lofty than host garn or JC Rennie. And I suppose because this doesn't have as much spinning oil as the other two have. Burnt orange, 500 gram, 100% wool. What would I do with this bright orange? I have no idea. I just loved the feeling of the orange color, the feeling literally. And um, I can't imagine myself wearing a jumper this color, but it can come really handy with the color work, perhaps uh, holding it with a brown color or a beige color. And this would look amazing in the autumn. I got as well some silver grey because I love silver color. I need all the time in silver. Well, I love. It's not my favorite color of all the colors, but I found myself uh, wearing this color a lot. So I tend to knit in this color. I tend to wear this color quite a bit. Uh, it's just nice. It's kind of variegated. I can tell. I don't know if you can see from the camera there, but there is a kind of beige yarn and a more bluish yarn held together, which is kind of interesting and will probably give some lovely, lovely shades when knitted up and when twisted once again together. So silver gray and then finally we got some summer storm here. This is another 500 gram super soft 100% uh, British wool cone. Uh, this is just because I was silly and <laughs> I liked um, the idea of having some kind of light blue soft woolly hoggy type of jumper so that's why I got this as well. So, I got these four cones with um, the Crayabea discount code would have cost me around 40 euro. I have no idea about the conversion pounds or um, dollars, but yeah, you just get the math a little bit. It was a very good price. The surprise came when the guy from UPS came at my door and asked me to pay for the import taxes which I didn't realize were that high. And so on the top of the 40 euro of yarn, I ended up paying 65 euro on import taxes. Which once again doesn't make any sense to me. So all this yarn cost me all together the 40 euro, 45 euro of yarn plus import taxes plus shipping, a fortune. Of course, it's yarn, of course it's gonna turn into lovely, lovely jumpers, and of course it's different, but with half 
of the price here, I would have bought probably more yarn out of Holst, which makes me think I'm, I've been a little silly in buying that much yarn without checking uh, import or custom taxes before. Anyway, now you have it and I, this is in my stash and it's gonna live there forever and ever until it gets knitted up. If you are knitting something especially, like uh, something for me, like a male type of jumper or cardigan, let me know. I'm on the lookout for new patterns and uh, looking to get something different, perhaps, with this type of yarn, which is something I love. So, we got to the end of the podcast, the acquisitions, the works in progress, the two smidgy finished work. And now we have a couple of things to talk about. So, first of all, if you have been waiting for so long for the draw of the giveaway, thank you so much. I'm so really sorry. Uh, last week I was supposed to draw the um, giveaway winner, but I didn't uh, have time or I wasn't in the mind space for that task <laughs> and uh, yeah I was about to leave it for another week uh, this week but we probably like I put myself together and uh, it took a minute um, put all the names in an online tool that draws from um, YouTube comments filter out uh, the comments and um, yeah we got a winner a little bit on the giveaway before announcing the winner. I did want to celebrate my uh, thousand subscribers here on YouTube, which is nothing, I know, for the YouTubers that have millions of subscribers, but it was a big milestone for me and um, I've been playing around with YouTube for quite a while and uh, never would I have ever expected to have a thousand two hundred people look at, at my channel. Ever. Which still scares me because uh, I would never speak to a thousand two hundred people, we're most, almost a thousand three hundred now. I would never speak to that many people on a stage live, in real life. And uh, yeah, here I'm talking to a camera and I'm hoping to have some views, but uh, it's quite scary. Anyway. I felt really blessed and my heart was really uh, exploding when I received a notification from YouTube saying, oh, you reached a thousand subscribers. So I really wanted to give you back something. And I will draw a person um, out of all the comments that we had on my thousand subscribers video. I would love to have more people, to give more people, but um, yeah, this is a tiny channel, this is a kind of a hobby for me, and all the prices that I got are purchased from myself, so they're not gifted. And um, yeah, uh, it's a quite embarrassing to say, but you know, here we go. So, as this was meaning so much to me, I wanted to get something that it was really meaningful to me. And uh, I got three prizes. First of all, sorry for the crackling here. First of all, a pattern book. And this is a book that um, helped me a lot to get into knitting. This is the first book I got. I was obsessed back a few years ago with Arna and Carlos and watching their videos, um, the way they inspire people, the way they live through art and design was really, really inspiring. So I learned so much from them and from this book that uh, I thought it was a very nice way to share a little bit of myself and a little bit of my knitting journey with one of you at least. This book is full of 
Norwegian style color work and Norwegian style designs. Hence why I'm obsessed with color work and uh, Norwegian style designs. So you get socks, you get coasters, you get jumpers, you get hats, uh, gloves, whatever. I actually needed both of these jumpers and uh, they are absolutely lovely. Uh, I think I needed the match part of the pattern here. But uh, the way that uh, they explain the patterns, the way that they explain the techniques is just amazing, super easy to follow. So this will be the first prize for the giveaway. I wanted as well to give you some of my culture. So something that was part of my upper bringing as well as something that I'm building now. So thinking about what you get, uh, which was uh, knitting related, but as well uh, Venetian, Italian related and Irish, Ireland related, it was down to yarn and craft. So the next thing that I got is a set of stitch markers made out of pine wood from a very local shop in uh, a town really close by where I'm from and this guy is a very very great wood artist I am going to link his website below he makes the most amazing art um, sculpture out of wood locally sourced from the Dolomites his shop is just amazing it's just like getting into a little Alice in Wonderland type of world with beautiful sculptures and objects everywhere and uh, cuckoo clocks uh, literally all over the place and so the sound and the smell of the wood and as well the person, the artist that is always there welcoming people is just a great thing. So I have a number of stitch markers, I don't remember how many actually. We have eight stitch markers here uh, he made these stitch markers. I asked him to uh, kind of stamp them with some knitting sentiments like increase one, decrease one, and so on and so forth. They are made out of pine wood, sourced in the dolomite, and then I attach one of those uh, like a light bulb type of markers uh, thingy. And they are really lovely. I got a set for myself as well, just because you never know. And then finally, the biggest part was uh, getting some yarn from Ireland, which is the second part of myself and where I'm from. So I was looking at um, online retailers and uh, indie dyers and I stumbled across these lovely, beautiful things. These are uh, merino and... Um, nylon yarns from uh, Fine Leaf Fibers, which is an indie dyer here in Ireland. She is based in Cork. She dyes the most beautiful colors ever. This is uh, Underwater, which is a lovely variegated bluish grayish color. It looks exactly like the ocean. It's so pretty. Then we got uh, Forbidden Marshland which is probably my favorite, it is a nice green with warm gray and brown tones and a little bit of blue as well. And then Fire Sparks, which is a fantastic orange, yellow and gold. These are three sock yarn, they are 20 grams each, so three minis. You can get a nice little uh, color work uh, design, you can use this as a contrasting color or you can need a couple of uh, shorties as well or whatever else you wish. It's just a lovely sock yarn. I was so tempted to keep this for myself. Actually, she gifted one for me, uh, but I feel like uh, I'll be really, how can I say, really selfish if I keep one of these three for me. They are so gorgeous that uh, one of you may actually enjoy this so much more than I do. I never buy indie dyed yarn 
I never buy hand IDR at all. Uh, I find that I'm not as good as a meter as uh, to justify spending a huge amount of money on indie dye yarn, hand dye yarn, craft yarn. But uh, after holding those three skeins in my hands and uh, feeling them, looking at the amazing color, I may be converted. I still don't know how much yarn I would need, how much money I would need to spend on the jumper for myself, uh, but yeah, I am going to end up buying so much yarn, at least from fine leaf fibers here in Cork, because the colors are just so amazing, and the texture of the yarn as well is great. So, let me get through the winning stage. So, I have put all the comments into an online tool that uh, basically, well, I didn't put a comment, I just took the link of the uh, video and put it into the, this tool that um, uh, ruffle through the comments and pick one person out of everybody that have comments. There is an option to um, filter through people that comment twice or three times, but I didn't check that because uh, at some point I mentioned that the more entry you got, um, the more comments you put, the more entry you got or something like that, which is good for my side because I got more comments and so the algorithm was happy and as well for who of you that took the effort to get into the tool. To get into the comments, sorry. Um, the tool picked um, this person called Blue Eyed Style. So I am going to put the name here as well. Uh, if you are a Blue Eyed Style and you wish to receive uh, your present, please send me a comment here, a message, an email through irishfarmart.gmail.com whatever way you wish to contact me and I will and we will organize the shipping. I'm going to ship it to you. Um, no idea where you're based <laughs> uh, but uh, it might take some time because of course with Covid all the postal situation is a little slower but uh, yeah please contact me I'll be delighted to send it to you and uh, hopefully you will receive this and enjoy it. So once again the winner of my 1000 subscribers giveaway is Blue Eyed Style. So lastly I would like to talk to you about uh, the design that I created uh, last week or two weeks ago to support uh, the refugee crisis in Ukraine. I don't have it here, unfortunately, but I'm going to put a picture here. Um, so this pattern is one of my papillons, um, my bow ties uh, dedicated to Ukraine. Um, the scope of this pattern was to be able to raise some money and some funds to support um, the organizations that are working with uh, the um, Ukrainian refugee crisis right now. We know there are a lot of people impacted by this. A number of refugees, I think around the 5,000 mark, just came to Ireland and I really hope they received a warm welcome. The city itself, Dublin, is full of Ukrainian flags and you will see that in a second when I put my uh, kind of snippet from the parade. Um, so it's a really warm feeling that the Irish community and us all try to create for the refugees coming to Ireland and seeking some sort of a relief from a very terrible situation that is going home, back home for them. So I found myself kind of powerless thinking about what can I do, what can I not do. And um, I am, as I said, always in my intro, an aspiring knitting designer. So designing is what I do. And I created this little bow tie to 
being able and uh, do something through my craft, through my artistic vision. So this bow ties is for sale in my robbery page and is still for sale and 100% of the profit from the um, pattern will go to support uh, unicef.ie which of course everybody knows unicef it's the irish branch and um, it's an organization that will it's involved in helping especially children impacted by the refugee crisis impacted by the war so as per now we had 20 sales the pattern is priced at 3 euro per pattern which gives us 60 euro um, in uh, income, in, uh, in uh, price raised, in money raised. I am going to donate some for myself and I'm going to try and match at least this 60 euro. So 120 euro are going to uh, unicef.ie this week, probably after this video is up. And I will keep donating on a monthly basis, probably the pattern is not selling that much, <laughs> on a monthly basis, what we get through that specific pattern uh, to UNICEF, at least until the crisis is over. And uh, afterwards, this probably will be a free pattern. So, if you're interested in donating um, or in buying the pattern for you, you can just find the link below in the description or check out my robbery page. And I suppose that is it. It was a probably shorter vlog, rumbly, not much stuff done. I am recovering from St. Patrick's Day and I am kind of bored into stuck in a tile and uh, horrible long brainy project but we'll get through that it's just a week and uh, next week will be 100% better I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please consider to subscribe to my channel this will give you the chance to Keep updated with my videos and uh, as well give me a little bit of support. It doesn't cost anything as everybody say. And uh, yeah, like, comment and I really hope you enjoy this week. I'll see you very soon. Bye bye.
Thank you.